Welcome back to another episode of Oncology Brothers Podcast. In today's discussion with Drs. Maria, Rage, and Emil Cohen, we focus on treatment strategies for intermediate HCC from local regional options like TACE, TAIR, Y90, SBRT, to systemic approaches and combination strategies. We also discuss the clinical importance of multimodality approach and the need to personalize treatment based on the patient's specific profile and disease progression. Let's kick this off. If you don't mind briefly touching on what BCLC staging system is, and how do you exactly go about intermediate stage here? Intermediate ATC is the best example of the need of multidisciplinary team because we have all the tumor inside the liver, but the amount of tumor that we have could be completely heterogeneous. That's why in the last version of the BCLC, we consider the liver function, the performance status zero, but also what is the amount of tumor that we have. Everybody knows that the criteria for liver transplantations are not homogeneous around the world, but we have a specific population that we consider that. Then in the other side, we have patients who have tumor inside the liver, but is diffuse or is not feasible to do a local regional treatment. In this case, we think about systemic therapy, but the main group of patients still receive the local regional treatment. Then we can discuss if we believe in la- local regional treatment taste or, or radioembolization. The evidence base today is taste. Okay, now that we have this foundation, let's take a little deeper dive and few treatment options for intermediate HCC. Can you please walk us through some of these available options here? Um, so the options that we have for local regional options are chemoembolization, which is the old school thing that's been around for like 50 plus years. Um, we have modifications of that radioembolization, which is radioactive beads, as you well know. That's been around for about 20 plus years. And we have my- microwave ablation, but in this category, it's a little bit harder to apply. And then you also mentioned the external beam radiation therapy, which it seems like it's mostly confined to cases where we cannot use other curative options. We need to consider many factors that are completely beyond the liver function and the tumor burden, and it's more related where we are working on and, and other things, where are the specialists that are in the center, and also the reimbursement. So all of these things now is also part of the discussion for selecting the treatment. Now, while we know that uh, this, in general, hepatocellular carcinoma is associated with poor prognosis, as a result, systemic therapies, which have been doing well, at least in metastatic setting, are being put out or brought in earlier stages. We have seen that, whether that's standalone or combined with local regional therapies, we've seen that with replace data with uh, regorafenib plus pembrolizumab versus taste or terror, emerald with dervalumab with taste. Generally speaking, I'm happy to say that we expect new data and new information related to treatment failure, for example, and understand better what that means progression for survival. Right. I think that's a very good point. I think these therapies, systemic therapies, are showing great promise, especially with combination. How do you often dissect as more and more of these therapies are moving early on and now focusing on intermediate HCC? If the patient has a severe adverse event, regardless of the origin, you have to... uh, resolve the complication, and then you can decide retrospectively if we're linked for one or, or the other. But from a pro- pre- clinical point of view, I believe that the most important thing is identify the profile of adverse event that we're talking about. I think this complicated conversation only tends to reiterate that we need to have radiation oncologist, IR surgeon, pathologist, radiologist, and medical oncologist sitting on the same table when making decisions, especially when intermediate ATC. I think you summed it up very nicely. I, given the fact that we don't have a flowchart for these um, category of patients, but if you can reach out to, and I, as I do, to my even colleagues sometimes in more difficult cases to other institutions, to try to get an answer in a difficult patient. It's very useful. And working as a team, like you mentioned, is extremely important. Dr. Rage and Dr. Cohen, thank you so much both for your time and insights on this rapidly involving but complex space of intermediate HCC. Thanks for joining us. Make sure to check out our other discussions in the HCC series and stay tuned for the final episode on hepatocellular carcinoma. We are the Oncology Brothers.